folks. Uh, the purpose of this video is to uh, help demonstrate how to analyze uh, motion in the plane for uh, projectiles. So in this example, imagine this uh, young man here, he's holding a slingshot. And this slingshot, let us say, can fire a rock at 50 meter per second. And he fires this rock at a wall at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. So basically this angle right in here would be 30 degrees. And Imagine that this rock wall is, I don't know, 100 meters away. We're going to try to calculate how high that rock is going to hit on the wall. Now, because we're dealing with velocity, position, acceleration, these are all vector quantities. Because we're dealing with vector quantities, the first thing we need to do here is put a set of coordinates or a coordinate system in this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that in blue here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a set of coordinates uh, basically right where the rock is leaving from. All right, so x, y. So effectively, you know, give or take, you know, a couple inches or so, the rock is leaving from the point uh, zero zero. Now, when dealing with motion in the plane, um, you always need to analyze the x versus y motion independently. And in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to break the velocity vector down into its horizontal and vertical components. So imagine this rock here. I'm just going to go back to black. And uh, if I draw its velocity vector, V sub O, up at an angle 30 degrees with even the x-axis I have drawn, this vector can be broken into components. And I'm going to do those in red here. Okay, there's what I would call V sub O X, initial velocity X direction, and V sub O Y, which is initial velocity in the Y direction. Now, from trigonometry, cosine 30 would equal V sub O X over V sub O. So V sub O X is equal to V sub O cosine 30. And in this case, we can calculate a number because the V sub O is uh, 50 meter per second. And then V sub O Y, from, again, from standard right angle trigonometry is going to equal V sub O sine 30. So I'm going to take a moment here and just pause this and get numerical values for us to uh, before we move on. All right, folks, I'm back. So, yeah, that was quick. I got numerical values here. So what I've calculated here is that V sub O in the X direction is about 43 meter per second. V sub O in the Y direction is about 25 meter per second. So... <clears throat> these velocity components, the 43 meter per second, represents how fast this rock is going to be moving along the x-axis, and the 25 meter per second represents how fast the rock is going to be moving in the, uh, along the y-axis. Standard, our standard assumption for projectile problems is no acceleration in the x-direction. It's a reasonable assumption when we're talking about rocks or baseballs or you know things that are relatively heavy compared to their surface area. Uh, acceleration in the y-direction All right, we're going to treat this like a free-falling particle, so the acceleration will be minus g, or minus 9.8 meter per second squared. Now, the minus sign, as far as plus and minus signs are concerned here, um, only has meaning after I've defined a coordinate system. Okay, so the acceleration in the y direction is uh, down. I've got the positive y direction pointing up and hence I'm going to use a numerical value of negative 9.8 meter per second squared when we uh, work on the uh, vertical motion of this projectile. All right, so now as far as analyzing it, um, now that we have the accelerations, I'm going to go ahead and draw velocity graphs. Now it's important to note here that there's two different graphs I can draw. I'm going to draw one for, oops, I'm going to put it down a little lower. I'm going to draw one graph to represent velocity in the x direction against time. And then I'm going to sketch a graph for the x coordinate against time. Right? And I always recommend people start with a velocity graph. So the velocity in the x direction is 43 meter per second. There is no acceleration in the x direction. So that 43 meter per second is constant. And these are units of meter per second, up to any point t here. Now, when our velocity is constant, that's going to give us a linear position curve. And this area represents the change in position. And that's from, if I take a look at velocity, is delta x over delta t. It's pretty easy to show that delta x is equal to velocity times delta t. 
on this graph, velocity is the vertical uh, axis here. The delta t is the horizontal axis. So the product of the two is area. So this area right here uh, gives the change in position. And since the initial position is 0, this ends up being x equals 43t. Now I'm going to put a little NCU here, so for those of you there in my class know exactly what that means. Uh, note consistent units, the 43 is in unit of meter per second. My accelerations are in units of meter per second squared and my positions meters, so we're good to go there. So when analyzing these equations, you're, you know, when analyzing the motion of a particle, I usually recommend, all right, once we get a function figured out, then ask ourselves, can we calculate anything? So when the rock finally hits the wall, we know that its x-coordinate is now plus 100. So I'm going to go ahead and just put these values in here. We're going to have 100 meters is equal to 43 meter per second times t. And we'll just solve this for t. And let's see, when we do so, I get about 2.33 seconds. So now we know when that rock's going to hit the wall. We've only analyzed the horizontal motion. I'm going to go ahead now and start analyzing the vertical motion of the rock. So again, I'm going to do that in a similar sense here. Um, I'm going to draw myself a velocity graph. And I guess I'll draw it down here. I need a little more room. All right, so velocity, y direction against time. Now, when graphing, I always recommend, you know, think about the intercept first. So at t equals zero, this rock is moving at 25 meter per second. So on my graph here, that means the point zero 25 is going to be on the graph. And again, these are in units of meter per second. Okay. Now as time goes on, that 25 meter per second is going to is going to change, right? Because of gravitational acceleration. Remember, gravity, gravitational acceleration is right around minus 10 meter per second squared or 10 meter per second squared down. I'm taking the 9.8 and just rounding it to 10 for the sake of this quick discussion. That means that a second later, the velocity in the y direction is going to be about plus 15 meter per second. And a second after that, it's going to be about uh, plus 5 meter per second. A second after that, it's going to be minus 5 meter per second. Right? So acceleration is constant. That's going to give us a linear curve here. And the equation for that line we can get from um, the fact that the acceleration is the slope, negative 9.8 meter per second squared, and the intercept is the 25 uh, meter per second. So the equation for this line, if I pick a spot on here, um, the equation for that line is going to be Vy equals 25 minus 9.8t because the negative 9.8 is the slope and the 25 is the intercept. So moving up now to my position graph, need a little room here, for the y coordinate against time, looking at this picture, it's looking like it's going to be something like maybe this, up to the point where it hits the wall. Now, some of the things I'd like to point out uh, about the graph, this point right here, where v sub o y is zero, would correlate to this point right here, where the tangent line has zero slope. That's not necessarily relevant for our question, though, for when we hit the wall, I just pointed out, because it's, uh, you know, could be important in another problem. The toughest part of these problems now is getting the equation of motion for the y direction here, trying to figure out what this function is for y. y equals, right? And when you're trying to develop a function and you want it to be good for all time, you have to kind of pick a generic point along the curve here. So that's why I put this dot right here. This is at some, what I would call kind of generic t here. And then the velocity that goes with this time, we don't have a number, what we have is a function. Well, the change in position, just like all the problems we've talked about to date uh, about motion, the change in position or the change in y, I'm gonna write this right here, is equal to this area. I'm going to go ahead and do this in green right here. This area right here gives us the change in position, just like in the previous problem, or the, or the previous uh, part where we were analyzing the x motion. This area right here 
gave us the change in position for x. Well, this area gives us the change in position for y. Now, this thing is a trapezoid, and there's a couple different ways to handle a trapezoid. I'm going to go ahead and do this in red. The way I handle a trapezoid is this. If you go right in the middle, I'm going to put a dot, and you make a rectangle like this. Now, it's not a perfect picture, but if I had this right exactly in the middle, what you take note of is you could, you could cut this piece out and glue it in the upper left-hand corner, and it would fit perfectly. And the moral of that story is the rectangle, this thing probably should be a little lower, more like that, the rectangle has the same area as the trapezoid. So what I'm going to do is use the rectangle's area there to calculate the area of the trapezoid. Now, area of a rectangle is length times width, so that's no problem at all. This dimension is W, that's no problem. The, the only thing we got to consider is this thing right here. I always think of Goldilocks and the three bears here. This distance is smaller than 25, but bigger than this one. In fact, it's halfway in between them. Because it's halfway in between them, we can use the average to calculate it. The average of the, the velocity here and the velocity here, which is going to equal 25 plus this, now we don't have a number, we have a function, but 25 minus 9.8t, I want this to be an average, so over 2, and then times t. So this expression I've drawn in red would represent the area of this rectangle, which is the same as the area of the trapezoid, which is equal to the change in position in the y direction. And because y initial is 0, uh, delta y is just going to be y minus y initial, or y minus 0, which is just y. So this function can be written y equals 25t minus 4.9t squared. That's what you get when you take 25 plus 25 times t divided by 2, and then when you take 9.8t times t divided by 2. So the rest of this problem now is just kind of putting in numbers and seeing what we get out of this thing. When the rock hits the wall, it's y coordinate we don't know, it's h, but we do know the time. We know that from uh, analyzing the horizontal motion. The time is 2.33 seconds, so this is going to be 25 times 2.33 minus 4.9 times 2.33 squared. And again, I'm going to remind everybody of my NCU here, note consistent units. So this is in meter per second, this is in seconds. This term effectively is meter per second squared, and uh, this is seconds squared. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, see what I get out of this. I'm going to pause this for a moment because i got to run and find a calculator here. I'm just going to... All right, so I'm back, and I ran that calculation, and I got about 31.6 meters. I'm just going to approximate that. Y is approximately 32 meters high. So... Um, Here's an example of how to analyze projectile motion. Since I'm kind of room, out of room here, I'm not going to go through and calculate any other things, but here are some things we could have calculated. Uh, we could calculate the vertical velocity component by putting our time here. We would also know the horizontal velocity component is still 43 meter per second. We could take the horizontal and vertical, make a triangle out of it to find the speed. Um, that's about the only real obvious thing I can think of calculating. So anyway, I hope that this video helped uh, demonstrate for you how to analyze projectile motion. Again, I want to go through the highlights real quick that are really imperative. When analyzing projectiles, always start by, by breaking the velocity vector down into horizontal and vertical components. If you have a number for the horizontal velocity or for the speed, like in this example, 50 meter per second, this will look like you know 50 cosine 30 will have a number, 50 sine 30 will have a number. If you don't have a numerical value, perhaps the, un the V sub O is unknown, then give it a name like V sub O and move on. This would become V sub O sine 30, V sub O cosine 30, and, and you just move on. In this graph over here, we would not have a numerical value now. We wouldn't have a 43, but we would know that this was equal to V sub O um, cosine 30. And that would make this equation v sub o cosine 30t, and so forth. And do the same thing in the y direction. You'll end up with a, a slightly different set of equations that have a different unknown. So I'll try to make a video up uh, illustrating uh, an example like that. But anyway, hope this helped. Have a great day.